Why hello there, welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with me, your host Agassino Zynga and this is episode number 472, that's 472 of the Agassino Zynga show, how you doing, how you feeling, great, amazing, good to hear. If it's your first time checking out the show via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and leave me a comment down below with your thoughts, feelings, and suggestions. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And if you listen via the podcast site, please give the podcast episode or the show itself a share or all on your social media platforms. And if you can, please leave me a five-star review. That would obviously help the show to jump up the algorithms and all that nice bits and bobs when it comes to discoverability and all that malarkey. So if you could do that for me, I'd be greatly appreciated. And last but not least, support via Patreon is also welcome at patreon.com for just A-G-O-S-T-I-N-H-O. My Patreon I've been slacking. I'm meant to do one bonus episode per week, but I've been slacking a bit on there. But still, if you want to support the show via Patreon and get access to all the bonus footage i put on patreon only please subscribe at patreon.com for just agostino that's patreon.com for just a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o it's only a dollar per month a little as one pound you get access to all the bonus content as well as other stuff i have coming up in the future so make sure you tune in on there at patreon.com for just agostino patreon.com for just agostino oh and of course i'm also you know outside of all this podcast and stuff and working and being a model i also happen to be a dj right i do a bit of djing all the biggest clubs in the world so if you want to check out some of my dj mixes then please do at my soundcloud which is soundcloud.com for slash agostino dj i've got a brand new mix on there called bella 2 it's a mixture of loads of kizomba loads of afro house loads of ama piano loads of um very good cool nice african dance music i think progressing onwards i'm going to start doing loads of mixes in techno because for some reason people just assume because i just go out and dance to techno that somehow i can't dj that stuff and of course i'm one of the best techno djs that exist out there in the history of man look at the landscape of people that exist who look like me who can play that kind of music that they don't exist or i'm the first it goes jeff no it goes jeff mills then me those are the two people that play techno that look like me right that's it only that only exists so i'm gonna be uploading more of those mixes on my soundcloud obviously i'm going to be doing a few live streams so you definitely check that out on youtube if you haven't already seen those i have that on my playlist on my youtube channel you can find all the players of my dj live streams that i do called test test mixes which i basically go out and basically play some stuff that i've heard during the week or the you know, prevailing months and i put together like an hour-long stream i've got more of those coming up most of them again like i said will just be loads of techno electro and maybe breaks just to kind of give people an idea of like you know the energy and the vibes that mine can bring and hopefully that will then give me the possibility of maybe sending out some of those mixes to people you know getting some feeling testing some ground and see if people want to book me in some places but for the most part i just love doing it for my own personal enjoyment you know i love partaking in this culture you know in this culture or this scene that we're in at the moment with dance music and i just want to kind of you know express myself in any way possible i can you express yourself with your fashion you express yourself with your dancing your knowledge space and your community and also just by putting it together a little mix for yourself for your friends whatever it may be it's always nice to have those kind of um archives somewhere you can kind of trace how you've improved as a dj how he's improved the somebody in terms of like your ability to select and pick tracks that will go well in the mix all that stuff so if you're interested in the kind of stuff that plays dj then definitely check out my soundcloud again like i said it's soundcloud.com for shots agostino dj all one word soundcloud.com for agostino dj but i'll put the link down below so you can click on them and definitely check those out i'll put it obviously in the show note descriptions too if you listen to the podcast up you can click that and find all my mixes on there but yeah, apart from that, we're back. We're ready to go. If you're watching via YouTube, then you would have noticed a bit of a difference in my physical appearance. I've done what Safari couldn't do, and I followed through in the promise of bleaching my skin. I'm now much lighter than I was a few weeks ago. I quite, um, I might look at the same complexion as Chris Brown, I think, right now. Um, I'm kind of, you know, going for the anti-Joshua kind of skin tone because that'll look a little less obvious, um, as you can tell. No, no, no. Um, well, I, I went out and got a haircut, right? So first haircut since lockdown, really. Um, surprisingly enough, because I think the top of my hair, the top of my head, the hair here, obviously it's really long, but maybe it's, I wouldn't say it stopped growing, but because I don't really comb it out too tough, maybe the, the actual growing of it isn't really, you know, I'm not really encouraging it to grow well. And then obviously I don't get it braided and that also helps it to grow well. And in general, I don't probably take care of my hair as, as much as I should do. Cause I think people, what ends up happening when you have an abundance of hair on your head, like I do, which, you know, I'm never going to go bald. That's for sure. You don't really take it, you take it for granted and you don't really take care of it. As some people who don't have the amount of hair I've had in my head. So because of that i kind of you know can run into some problems but i realized how quickly my hair grows 
because of the, the length of the sides because obviously I'd never, I always shave my sides like I have now I always have like a skin fade and leave the kind of the top to do what it does and I noticed how quickly my hair grows on the sides because of lockdown because quite quickly I think after maybe what a year easy the sides of my head were maybe the same length if not close to the same length as the top which i've been having the same length or i've been having this mass i don't, I don't know for, for many years i can't even tell you when the last time i actually got it cut you know a considerable amount but when i did get it cut i, I didn't like what i saw i didn't like the surprise i didn't like how my head looked i didn't like the you know because my dream obviously would be that i could have like a level one and with a shape up and i could just look great in it because then it means that you can wear hats you can put on things you don't need to keep combing your hair it's just less maintenance overall but unfortunately those kind of haircuts just don't work on my head and that's why i have to keep this mold this flipping mountain here just to distract away from the peanut head shape that i seem to have been blessed with but you know it is what it is we all we all are born with our skills and our assets mine is that so um obviously when i um have my hair cut the sides are always cut so i don't really know how long the sides can get and again, you know, any questions I had about how long my hair grows were definitely put to rest when the side of my head catched up with the top in about a year. But yeah, getting the haircut was good. Um, a great sign of things returning back to normal. Um, I think for the most part, there was maybe some inkling because I think some people have suggested that um, some people close to me have suggested that maybe I didn't cut my hair because I was just a bit down, right, from the lockdown and not being able to do the things that I love. Um, it kind of made me be in a bit of a funk and that maybe you know lack of a haircut is represent representative of like a of like um suffering from some sort of mental depression or whatever it may be right um the same way some could say oh you know some people have they have their instagram accounts and they have their entire feed is just flooded with selfies of themselves no friends no nothing just loads of pictures of themselves staring at a camera and people would say oh yeah that's like a form of like mental illness and or oh, it's a cry for help and maybe me having my hair be so out of control and just not care taking care of my flipping I won't say personal hygiene because I'm showering and stuff every day, but just not taking care of my hair and stuff was maybe a sign of me just being down the dumps. Maybe, but I would probably lean more on the side of just because I'm not, you know, part of my, a huge chunk of my life is so, it's kind of um, dedicated by going outside. Like, you know, like I said before, um, at the start of the podcast, I obviously DJ a lot and I was doing it a lot prior to lockdown. I was play, basically playing um, most weeks from Friday to Sunday, Friday to Saturday, most weekends uh, or most weeks, sorry, um, which would mean I'd work Monday to Friday. The Friday, of course, I'd leave work early. I couldn't be able to, you know, which kind of hindered my performance at work too or my relationship with some people at work because I wasn't able to stay behind on the Fridays and have like after hour drinks and stuff. I'd always have to rush off and go and change, get my stuff, go play somewhere and then come back to work on Monday. I mean, I missed out all the banter over the weekend, blah, 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 blah. But regardless, that was my schedule, right? That was happening every weekend. Then on top of that, of course, I was doing my yearly, sometimes every six months daily uh, trip to kind of somewhere in Europe to go and party, like a t my little techno tourism stuff. So I'd go to Frankfurt, Amsterdam, Berlin, all these different places to go and listen to, obviously different DJs play, go to some legendary clubs. That's a part of my life. And then of course, going to uh, art exhibitions and private views and just hanging out outdoors, man. Just being out all the time in that kind of light, night lifey, culturally environment was a big part of why I did. And having that obviously taken away, really took away any kind of real onus or real need for me to get a haircut and even when it comes to buying clothes like i bought loads of clothes in the beginning of lockdown which i you know haven't obviously worn but i haven't worn any of that stuff i think i previewed some stuff some shoes that i bought last time on the podcast and i haven't touched them like they legitimately haven't touched the outdoors since i've actually got them um which goes to show you know um where i was at kind of mentally but of course with things slowly but surely opening up in the uk i felt it kind of good to maybe get my head used to having um less hair have me kind of getting used to seeing my face a little bit more cleaned up and then it'll hopefully give my barber a chance to kind of get familiar with my head again because my barber's usually pretty good the fates are usually quite you know hd and really clean this isn't the best but mostly it's to do with the fact that i haven't been there in like basically over a year and he hasn't you know seen my head in over a year so once he gets more used to having my head back in the in the chair and there's not so much hair to kind of fight with it'll get better but this is just kind of the it's always a sort of like um the sacrifice you do or the kind of you know the thing that you have to give up like if you want to grow your hair it's all well and good but then when you finally do cut it you have this understanding or knowledge of that your first haircut is never going to be a, that great. It's going to look okay. It's going to look good because you got your haircut and you look somewhat clean and put together. But in terms of it looking crisp 
it's not going to be there. Maybe the second, the third, once the head, you know, your barber, especially if you're using the same one, gets used to your head shape again, get used to what you kind of want, then suddenly your haircut becomes, you know, what it should be or kind of reaches the standards of what it was prior to that. But yeah, little by little, little by, little by little, we'll finally get there in it. But yeah, I've got a haircut ready to roll now. Um, it signals the return back to some sort of level of normality. And I legitimately cannot wait. I'll be able to put on some cool stuff, be able to listen to some cool stuff, be able to spray myself with, you know, really stinky fragrances, walk into nightclubs and just completely lose my mind. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Talking about that, of course, the big news to come out today, um, Boris Johnson finally confirmed the news that we've all been waiting for, especially people here in the UK when it comes to going out and all that good stuff. England festivals and nightclubs will be allowed to reopen from July 19th, right? Say that again. England festivals and nightclubs will be allowed to open from July 19th. I cannot wait. Now, don't get me wrong. The past couple of years have been really frustrating seeing all my, you know, um, e-friends and social media buddies um, in places like Berlin and stuff and parts of the States like New York, whatever, you know, hamming it up and having a great time. Nightlife is reopened. You're seeing Boston Nova Civic Club nowadays, places in Berlin like Club Division there and all this stuff like completely full and people dancing and having a good time. You're like, damn, man, why can't that be me? Or why can't that be us? Especially parts of Europe where we were kind of ahead of them. I think America, we kind of had to like, you know, you can't really compare what we're doing here to what they're doing in the States. They, were, they weren't necessarily taking that virus seriously seriously from the minute from the minute one but in terms of our kind of rollout of the vaccine we were kind of in a good place it felt like things were kind of getting back to normal and suddenly we hit a bit of a road bump and then all the other european countries overtook us and now we have like parties in paris like possessions have finally started up again and they're doing really great stuff and of course the stuff over there happening in berlin's happening there was i think someone shared a picture i saw recently on reddit of like a party happening in stockholm that looked amazing so places are reopening really quickly um obviously kind of well, quickly about back to back amsterdam obviously had a really good party or big one happening over the last couple of weekends uh dixon obviously played there recently so it's just been a bit you know i wouldn't say fomo but you just feel a little bit jealous like, damn and i wish that could be me I, I know exactly like i don't exactly like feel like going on a trip anytime soon i think the first i might do is maybe sometime into september onwards but i don't really you know i've not really got the travel bug yet just right just at the moment i'm sure once i go out and i start communicating with people and hanging out in different spaces that travel bug will kind of get bitten again or travel bag will kind of bite me once again but for now i'm more than happy with just staying you know on the uk shores and partying but this is such a good news to come finally we had some light in the tunnel and we're feeling like we have a resolution again things have to be confirmed i think on the 12th for stuff to be open but so far so good let's read the news here from resident advisor it said the uk government's going ahead with this latest phase of its reopening plan in the press conference this afternoon mr uh, sorry uk prime minister boris johnson confirmed this government plans to remove all the almost all remaining COVID-19 restrictions on July 19th. The news which signals the reopening of festivals and nightlife in England comes as the UK is suffering from another spike in COVID-19 cases. Johnson stresses that it's safer to remove the restrictions now than to wait until winter. The plan will be reassessed and reconfirmed on July 12th. So, the only thing I would say, a word of caution, it looks like this government is supremely cautious when it comes to reopening stuff and loosening restrictions, which... It's somewhat annoying on a selfish point of view, but in terms of looking after people and obviously, you know, the thinking of the greater good and all that stuff, it makes complete sense. But of course, unfortunately, they're in a position now where something I've mentioned a few times in the podcast where they finally start to have that. They stand, it feels like they finally started to ask themselves the question of how many deaths is enough to justify us reopening. And it's a really crass and a really heartless and a really painful proposition to even point especially when those people are losing family members and people that they love but unfortunately we can't necessarily live in a world where we're just going to hope that everybody gets vaccinated because you know not everyone's going to want to take up the vaccinations and we also don't live in we also can't envision a world where we're going to have single digit deaths or maybe none whatsoever it just doesn't seem that likely so what they have to do the compromise has to be made is like you know what we might as well just open it now whilst the deaths in the cases aren't as bad as they could be so that we can kind of learn to somewhat live with COVID going forward. And again, it's brutal to think about it, but unfortunately that is the reality of the situation. And then you think about it in terms of just from the business standpoint in the sector and it comes to hospitality and nightlife and all that stuff. There are festivals and clubs that have, you know, mostly I would imagine there's a few 
that were that basically went out of business when the first sort of like Freedom Day thing got scrapped, which was what June twenty third or twenty second, right? So some of the places didn't even survive this like new revised date. So think about how bad these people feel. Think about how gutting and much of a gut punch that is in general to be in a position where you felt like you finally held on and you could have opened in June. Then obviously that got paused because of the spike in cases or the I think that was the Delta variant. That's why it got paused, right? And then now there's a new date in the nineteenth, and there's still a lot of kind of um terms and conditions attached to it in terms of us reopening it's such a precarious position to be in if you're a business owner and you own a venue or you uh, you know you're you're part of a festival group or whatever it may be it's really 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 stressful i can only imagine so again for us as ravers the people that are just customers or even myself as like a freelance um no, what, what would you call it yeah, as like a freelancer, I guess, or somebody that, you know, you go in and DJ in places, we don't really have, you know, there's, of course, it matters a lot to us in order for us to get these places reopened, but there's not as much on, like, on the line for us, right? If they don't reopen, we just have to wait until it does reopen, or if you've got the funds and the ability to travel, you can just go to another country and go and party. But if you've got a place in a club and you solely rely on having patrons pay an entry fee and buy drinks at the bar and stuff and you know there's all these flipping terms and conditions being placed on when you can reopen it must be annoying and stressful to think of another because again all these places had really big reopening weekend plans right um for the first round for the first date that was put forth in terms of reopening stuff for freedom day now they're gonna have to do another set of plans and also keep in mind or keep in the back of the head that that could change you know at a blink of an eye and it could be scrapped once again it continues to say as of July 19th, nightclubs and festivals will be allowed to operate at full capacity and without mandatory mask wearing or proof of vaccination. Other changes, such as a full vaccinated adults not needing to isolate after traveling to ambulance countries will also be implemented again, which opens up all the different countries. Um, this loosening of restrictions was initially planned for June 21st but was delayed due to the threats of the variant. Although the number of cases in the UK is at its peak since January 2021, Johnson is ready to allow people to make their own informed decisions about how to manage the virus. 86% of adults in the UK have had at least one dose of the vaccine. 86% of adults. Well, that's a really weird stat because it means 86% of adults doesn't mean all adults in the UK, right? Um, that's only the adults that have actually taken out the vaccine. Right? Cool, whatever. So we're in a precarious position, right? The precarious position is... You wait for everyone to get vaccinated. There's one option. Yeah, there's an option where you somehow try and get everybody vaccinated, which may take you, what, up until Christmas, maybe the new year, who knows. But then there's also no guarantee that there's not going to be some new variant that might pop up out of nowhere that might not be, you know, created or kind of the media might not spin into some being an issue that it probably isn't. Who knows? But regardless, there's no guarantee that that's going to be a surefire plan. Or you open up now when the cases are spiking again all right there's a this is where we're in the kind of third wave now people are saying right from what i've read from what scientists are saying so it's a serious business loads of cases um i think i heard today brochure say the, the the link between cases and deaths or hospital whatever isn't necessarily broken but it's still there which is odd to say because it kind of puts into it kind of makes you question why we're reopening on the 19th if the cases are spiking there's still deaths we're not able to disassociate deaths with cases but i just guess they have to kind of take the best possible option at the worst possible time in it and they're probably thinking you know what let's just open now even though the numbers are horrible if we wait any longer the numbers might be so crazy it would be like you know it would be kind of inhumane to reopen the economy again and then people will be even more depressed and more angry more fed up and all this sort of stuff so it's a really precarious and unfortunate position to be in if your position like i said you couldn't pay me enough to have that job but again this is what you're in there for isn't it this is what you're meant to be in there for so looking forward to july 19th cannot wait to get back on a dance floor cannot wait to be shuffling and dancing around with all of my friends and family and all that good stuff and yeah it's just gonna be an absolute whale of a time in it really is gonna be weird i think that like i said before i'm really curious to see what the kind of um what the kind of turnout will be like i'm really do i'm really kind of skeptical about this idea that it's going to be like the roaring 20s again i have a feeling that there's going to be a prevalence of people who kind of you know would you would expect to see in nightclubs people who kind of you know live uh, like myself mostly at night right you live for the nightlife culture and stuff they will obviously go out but i think there is a wide there is a rate there is a probably a bigger range of people regular folk who have probably just moved on from going out all the time on the weekend they've probably picked up new hobbies they probably filled that void with other things that they want to do so 
people kind of, I think, underestimate how much those people add to the overall numbers of people that go outdoors and just the general vibe and the feeling. And I think the reason why I say that is because over the weekend, obviously, I went to watch England um, successfully beat Ukraine 4 0 in the quarterfinals of the Euro 2020s. And even though it felt busy outdoors, it wasn't as, I didn't feel as much trade and commerce and exchanging of money and just kind of, you know, that energy that tourism brings to a city, it didn't really exist. I see a lot of people kind of hanging around and walking around in circles because, you know, there's, you know, there's much better things to do in your life than be sat at home. So why not go and walk around a shopping mall or go around a town centre or whatnot? That makes complete sense. But I didn't necessarily feel the same sort of vibe and electricity that you generally do feel in London when it's open as per usual, you know, prior to COVID. It felt as if like, you know, for the most part, the heartbeat of the city has kind of somewhat been uh, quietened or dampened somewhat. I don't know. The pulse is just not there as it was before. So I have a feeling that might translate to clubs and we might see, again, all the club kids will be there. But in terms of the, the average consumer who just kind of pops in because they've got nowhere else to go or the person that travels from a place in Europe where maybe they don't have as good of a dance music scene as we have coming over, I think they really do add to the nights and add to the, the kind of atmosphere. And without them, you're going to definitely diff notice a difference. Now, it might be a good thing. It might actually change the way you kind of rave and how people interact with their spaces and stuff. I don't know. It might change how DJs play. It might just might change how people program certain events because i'm sure certain places like e1 and stuff when they book certain tech house djs they're hoping for a contingent of like you know italian tourists or italian expats or spanish people or french people to come into their clubs and play but again during covid who's to say all those people are still here in this country i don't know have they all gone back home to go because again italy was hit quite hard with covid right you would imagine if you're a club kid and your family live in, I don't know, some small town somewhere that doesn't really have any close links to, you know, doesn't have any close connections to any kind of hospitals or shops and stuff. You want to go back and just help your family, innit? You feel bad to just stay here and do your thing. I guess it's different if you live in a very much important city. But if you live, if you're from a really small country town or countryside, you want to obviously be there for your fam. So I think a lot of people have probably gone back home. They probably decided maybe when they're back home, they decided, you know what, maybe London isn't this, isn't what it all cracks up to be. It's not the city or the land paved with gold and milk and honey pouring out, on the, sh out of the trees and shit. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's hard work to live and survive in this city. Um, it's even harder when you don't have the ability to earn money and to move around as you need to be with the restrictions in place. So I don't know. I've got a feeling it's going to be different. It'll probably be for the best. Personally, for me, selfishly, I don't care how different it is. I just want to be on the dance floor again. I want to hear music really loud. I want to see DJs play. I want to see crazy people's outfits. I want to see people in their crazy outfits. I want to see just a whole melange of flipping people from all over the world celebrating, having a good time under one roof, you know, not really talking about politics too much and just focusing on the music, not talking about all the shitty stuff that's going on in the world, just focusing on the music, having a good dance, you know, um, bumming a cigarette off somebody in a smoking area that I don't smoke. Uh, all that nonsense stuff that you get up to that just makes the evening so much fun. I can't wait to go back out and do, man. I really can't wait. And if I couldn't get enough FOMO as per usual, my FOMO is usually... I usually try and keep my phone. My, I'm usually quite good at my phone, right? I usually can keep a lid on it because generally my life is full of loads of cool, interesting things that I do on a kind of daily, if not weekly basis. But obviously, with the restrictions that are in place now at the moment, it's pretty difficult to make living at home and working from home and all this sort of stuff fun. But so with that said, when you see videos like this from over the weekend, position. Um, it's obviously a party outfit out of Paris specifically, I think. And they do all these really amazing warehouse events and events in like these really ab amazing abandoned spaces. And they kind of, you know, put the club in all these different, they kind of take the idea of clubs and the idea of club kids and, and transpose them in all these different environments, not necessarily in the nightclub itself. And the energy and the kind of vibe that they bring is just un unparalleled. I like the fact that they kind of promote and kind of boost up all local DJs for the most part, people that kind of surround their sort of orbit of friends people that are maybe you know um, native to france in general and it just feels like it's a whole different thing isn't it it's not really the same people that you see on the same lineups sometimes they do have the odd bait guest here and there i think one party they had like an immediate lens playing but for the most part they try and keep it in house it's always friends of friends but they do a good job of selling this bitch out like every time i see tickets going out for them like you know they've run through the first couple of releases and it's always the last ones left and i think recently they announced a whole slew of dates i think every saturday basically until the end of august or something it feels like they're doing an event um in paris just outside of i think like 30 minutes away 
and these parties are legendary um, on the gram for the most part because they just look incredible. All these screaming kids going crazy, dancing their fucking faces off, you know, melting, pulsating in skimpy clothes, in leather, in PVC, just going crazy. Like the what you'd imagine an actual techno party to look like, right? The kind of opposite of what you see when you sometimes watch the video footage of like parties from like boiler room and stuff, right? When it's all a bit sanitized and people are a bit stiff and not really enjoying themselves. So when I see videos like this of them enjoying themselves this past weekend, it just makes me think, oh, I can't wait to get back on the dance floor. I really can't. So this is a video taken from Position Techno Party. This is from their Instagram account. And it says, um, oh, the, the girl playing, I guess it's, her name is Nyla Jujoj or Gugot or Guget, aka Parfait, is serving breakfast in Paris. And let's play the video clip now. <laughs> That looks so much fun. Um, I think throughout the night, if I'm not mistaken, earlier on, because I saw some videos from before the party, there were loads of really cool LEDs and projections just underneath the DJs, just like a little covered area. That was pretty cool to see. Um, it started raining really early in the morning and people were still going crazy. There was a guy that was basically in his little tighty whiteies, just dancing, having a great time. Um, it's just great it really is and I think a lot of that obviously comes from you know the the part that most people have been especially in Paris they've had they've been living under if I'm not mistaken they still had curfews pretty recently right um, so you can just imagine how much fun and how much um, joy it kind of existed in that crowd people just you know happy to be outside again happy to be dancing with people from their scene the little community raving under one kind of umbrella um banner whatever it may be you under one roof having a great time and again i can't wait for us to do the same thing here in the uk i really can't first party as per usual as per usual first party that we're ticking off the list is going to be dixon um, after party, the crank bar after party in Village Underground. It's the 30th of July. I cannot wait. If you happen to see me there, come by and say hi. I'll be somewhere dancing next to the speakers or monging out somewhere in the corner. So definitely make sure you say hi. <laughs> and that'll be a great in in evening, a great celebration, a great way to kind of cap a pretty terrible year or a couple of years overall. But yeah, I can't wait to get back on the dance floor. I really can't. You can't really replicate these things on streams or even video clips. It doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. You have to be there to really notice everything and to really experience the whole thing. So I can't wait to do that myself and to be taking my way. Because before I wasn't, I didn't really care about these clips. I wouldn't really care ever. When you see these clips on Instagram, you say, oh, cool, it's cool to see people having a good time. But when you don't have the possibility of doing it yourself and you see everyone else enjoying it, it's just, oh, man, I want to be out there so badly. So can't wait for us to be out there very very soon it's gonna happen one step at a time that's where it's gonna be what else i wanted to talk about let's move on from that let's take away all these different signs body ba 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 where is it let's move on from that what you want to talk about ba, 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 ba. oh yeah this is let's go about this video so this video here, courtesy of Politics for All, again, we're going to move on from the COVID talk because it gets a bit boring, but I just want to make a quick point. This video here, courtesy of Politics for All, features a lady called Christina Pagal. She's a professor from the Independent Sage Group, right? That's a government body or the independent scientific body or something along those lines that's basically been advising the government on their response to COVID and all that stuff, right? <clears throat> so they've basically been you know, helping out and providing some scientific basis behind or scientific information or advice as to where the government should point the direction or what they should do in terms of reopening things up, locking things down, blah, 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 blah. And it shouldn't be surprising to, to see that a lot of these people within this scientific body are very um, cautious about reopening stuff and they just don't, in their heads, because they're scientists and they're not you know, government officials and they don't have to sort of communicate with, I guess, or they don't have to care about the greater good in terms of like business and economy and all that stuff. They're just looking at it purely from a scientific point of view. They can't really understand at all why the government is pushing forward with reopening when no one's been, when not everyone's been vaccinated just yet. And we're already kind of, you know, close to getting there. So why not just wait a few more months and then we can reopen quickly or reopen everything together? 
And for me personally, when I see stuff like this, I think it's a mental illness, right? And I kind of tweeted it as like a kind of a joke, right? Tongue in cheek that like these people are mentally ill who want to kind of have us continue living under some sort of draconian lockdown, you know, until everybody vaccinated, which seems to me to be completely unrealistic because you have to hope everybody is up for getting vaccinated. Not everyone is. People have their own reasons for doing so, whether it's, you know, queuing on stuff or stuff they read online it doesn't matter but everyone's got their choice as to whether or not they want to get vaccinated or not just for everybody to get vaccinated to reopen it just seems a bit harebrained this there somehow has to come a point where <clears throat> personal responsibility does come into play and blah 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 and i put this out i tweeted it and of course for some reason some people obviously didn't really respond too well to it one person being the secret dj who i kind of enjoy his um his tweets usually for the most part yeah but i feel like much like the they much like um the election of Donald Trump caused some people to just freak out and just, you know, I don't know, something happened to them. They, I guess it was Trump derangement syndrome, whatever it was, they were just so agitated and annoyed that Trump was president. And again, you know, I don't blame these guys because he didn't really seem like the, the most um, presidential of presidents that's ever existed in the history of time. But it seems like with COVID in the UK, it's just, it feels like it's made some people just go completely balmy, in it? Like balmy to the point where they just can't accept or even um they can't accept or yeah they can't accept the idea or they can't accept the fact that there's people around them who support what they do who might have a different opinion as to how we should go about reopening stuff or you know different view as to what the scientists are saying again this isn't kind of somebody that's super intelligent i'm not the smartest guy in the world or anything i'm not a scientist of course but when i see some of these people saying this sort of stuff i think to myself you know we've been locked indoors for the best part of what two years is coming up well, not get two years. I think it's maybe like 18 months under that. But I guess in terms of like university academic years, it's like two years. But regardless, it's more than tw it's more than it's more than 15 months. We've been under some sort of lockdown. Everyone's been pulling their hair out. People have kind of broken up, gotten together, had babies. So much has changed throughout that period of time. But we are all by and large gagging for a return to normality because we've all kind of realized as much as it's been a, a, you know good to have the ability to pause and take a break and take a fourth the pedal and reflect on things we kind of liked how our life was before and we want to return to it to some you know to some degree and to have these scientists come out and tell us oh no you can't return to your normal life until we have everyone vaccinated it's not safe it's not safe it's not safe you just get to a point where you think to yourself hold on all these other countries are opening or reopening in, in increments they've decided to take the risk and decided the the what is it what's that thing that boris always says the um something is worse than whatever but whatever they decide to take a calculated risk and reopen things up because you can't keep people hold up forever right lockdowns are not very effective in the long term overall but they may be a good temporary fix for a temporary solution but in the long term there's going to come a point where we're going to have to return to normal and cases and deaths will still be at a number that won't be satisfactory to the greater number of people because no one wants to see anyone die regardless if it's natural causes or whatever you don't see anybody pass away so when someone does pass away from a virus that did exist a couple of years ago that was kind of from from what we know so far maybe has escaped from a lab it's distressing it's sad to see and you don't obviously want that but again like for the greater good right in terms of like helping making sure the most people have the most level of kind of life satisfaction there just has to be an avenue or an option or roadmap that leads us to getting back to opening up sooner rather than later and this clip here from the bbc of this lady's talking from sage basically saying that we can't reopen until everyone's vaccinated just kind of sent me for a loop and of course i retweeted it said uh, most scient these scientists are flipping mentally ill and of course you know secretly just saw that got a bit irate and then decided to block me on it which is odd again i never understood the whole blocking thing um maybe because i'm i've been i've lived on the internet my entire life for the most part i've been on message boards i've been on forums where people said the most insane stuff so nothing really kind of can trigger me online I've, I've seen it all right i've been on just about every part of the internet that exists on out there but even parts of the dark web and stuff nothing really can kind of shock me in that respect so and I'm mostly of the school of if I don't like something, I just turn away in it or I just kind of go somewhere else. I don't kind of shout at the rafters for you to stop doing what you're doing. If other people are enjoying it, I just kind of go somewhere else. And again, because, you know, there's so many of us on the Internet, um, especially fans of what people do. You would imagine that some you'd imagine that some people who do great stuff like, you know, Secret DJ obviously got those two great books that I've read that I thought were really good. He would just imagine. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't think it through, but 
surely Sika DJ knows that there's some of his fans, because, you know, I would imagine he's probably more on the left-leaning side, but I would imagine he has to understand that there are definitely some of his fans, I like his books, that like some of his insights into dance music and DJ culture, that are probably raging Tories, right? He probably has to realise that, right? And if that's the case what does he block them all because he doesn't share the same political belief as them if they if they say we want to reopen things up and we don't care about vaccines and all this sort of stuff like would he block those two guys too i don't know i should i just don't understand that i think it's super super odd um it's even stranger when it's like grown adults right? i mean like this guy is like what in his 50s or something and he's going around blocking people because they don't agree on how he views you know um, reopening stuff and again you're a dj jeremy you know I mean? you're not a scientist you're not anything you're just like us and suddenly you've become the spokesperson for how things should be reopened in terms of um, in hospitality and dance culture stuff i don't know it just seemed a bit strange i just found it very very odd and bizarre but hey you know everyone's free to do what they want to do but this is the video in question that made my man sorry ray and my reply got him so pissed off but hey what can you do basically this is the review or this is the video itself of the lady speaking about the need for everybody to be vaccinated before we reopen which to me sounds completely crazy but hey here we go and there's no doubt the vaccination has put us in a much much better place than we were before but infections still matter they matter because um, about 10 to 20 percent of people end up with long covid which can be quite debilitating they matter because every infection is a new chance um, for a new variant to arise and they matter because we still don't know what the really long-term impacts of this disease is so if you were advising the government what what should the government do in terms of timing I mean, we're about three quarters of the way through our vaccination program. I'd like to finish it before we go all the way to opening, which is exactly what Israel did. And even now, Israel is saying that Delta means that they haven't actually managed to keep control of it. It was fine with the previous variant. They so again, me, because maybe I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but how does that make sense? You want us to follow what Israel does or Israel did and try and vaccinate as many people as possible, the, the, the majority of the population, and then reopen stuff. But then Israel has proved even when you do that, it still doesn't guarantee that other variants might come in and disrupt or change the complete landscape of your response to the virus in the first place. So what it feels like is that there's no real white, there's no real white, there's no real right way to go about things. You're just going to have to make a decision, make a, you know, decide on the date to reopen and just hope and just pray to God that the numbers and the deaths are not really astronomical. That's basically what it feels like. You can chart as many graphs and make as many models as you want, but for the most part, there's no, especially now with the variants, that's what's kind of messed things up for the most part. There is no real guarantee that when you reopen that, we're going to be in a far better place than we were prior to that. It just feels like that. But again, what do I know? had which was alpha which is used to be the kent variant and now they're they're um starting to vaccinate their children um that's an option for us it helps more people who are immune the better um we really need to invest in ventilation we know that it's airborne and that's how it spreads but ventilation is a public good that's no restrictions right it's just made the, the the kid thing I don't understand. I don't know why you'd want to vaccinate your children when we've been told throughout the entire... From the beginning of... This is what makes me interested about this whole thing, how it's changed. From the beginning, we were told that, you know, kids don't necessarily are less susceptible to getting it. But then we were told kids can carry it and pass it on. The idea that you don't want to give it to your grandma and have your grandma pass away, right? You, who would want to have a kid have that on their conscience? That would be awful. And then... So then that's why schools were closed and kids were not able to go to classes because they didn't want kids to kind of be around and be spreading it from person to person, blah, 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 blah. But now we're in a position now suddenly now we want kids to be vaccinated to protect everybody else, but then we want everyone else to get vaccinated. It's just like, huh? And then the ventilation thing, mate, we don't even have air conditioning on buses and trains. What makes you think that suddenly now companies that have been our business for the best part of 15 months plus are going to have the money and the ability to put together or put install a ventilation system in their buildings but some buildings don't even have the possibility of even making that work right you have to kind of you know from the I'd, I'd imagine architecturally to have adequate ventilation you have to think about that before the building's even built right it goes into everything it goes into the cladding on the walls or cladding on the outside of the structure to the windows you choose to the seals that you put on the windows to the flooring that gets installed everything has to kind of it all works as a common idea of like it's, it's i'd imagine the same sort of thing like having a, a um a building that's got like a low carbon footprint or whatever or doesn't really you know put out any emissions i don't know but i would imagine to have a building that is well ventilated you have to decide those things before even a brick is laid on these foundations so to somehow now try and imp impose or trying to you know 
push people to retroactively install these ventilation systems is just asinine. And again, where does it end? Do you put the money in clubs? Do they go in cinemas? Do they go in theatres? Uh, do they go in bars and pubs? Like, what more? Like, you want to always... And again, it's, it's better... It's, I don't get me wrong. If you had to choose between, you know, trying to implement the COVID passports and the ventilations, of course, I'd go with the ventilations all day long. But how much more are they requesting for people to do when they've been out of work and unable to make money and support themselves for 15 months? And now you're asking them to put together ventilation systems. Like, guess what? making places safer you know we could do things like that um i think certainly keeping masks um in indoor public spaces is a good idea as well isn't the underlying point that it's quite likely that we will all be exposed to covid at some point and we've just got to get used to the idea um well it may brain farts you can't even figure that doesn't even comprehend in their head <laughs> that, that may be the case but why can't we all be exposed to COVID after everyone's been offered two doses of vaccine? You know, I don't understand why suddenly just because half the population is being vaccinated, then everyone else can just just risk getting COVID. I mean, we have safe and effective vaccines. We know they work. We know they're massively effective at preventing hospitalization and death. So why don't we offer that protection to everybody instead of deciding that it's over halfway through? That's what I that's what I find hard to understand. I find it hard to understand why anybody would be pushing for more restrictions or more delays in terms of returning back to life after all this time. I really don't understand it. Like, I, I just don't get it. I guess it's be I guess it's okay when you're like, you know, again, you're a scientist, you got, a, you know, you're a scientist from a government body. So I'd assume your salary is pretty substantial. You've probably got a couple of accreditations on your name. You've probably published a few papers. You're fairly educated, right? It's easy to kind of speak from that point of view. But when you're somebody that's just kind of, you know, it's, it's hurt, it hurts to say this, it's rude to say, but most people in the world are just existing, right? You just kind of wake up and you just exist in the world and you make the best of what you have. But there is no real, uh, you know, lofty ambitions for you and what you want to do, which is fine. No problem with it. Everyone has to play their role in this life. Not everybody can be flipping Alan Sugar. But part of existing and part of enjoying your everyday life is having the ability to go to the cinema, go to a club, go to an art gallery, hang out with your friends here, go to a restaurant there. Just be a, a, a able to move around the city or the town or the place that you live with no restrictions that is what gives your life some kind of meaning and purpose and without it you've basically rendered yourself null and void and obviously again forget even the element of like not being able to support your family because i'd imagine a lot of people even if they have been able to claim some sort of benefits and stuff the wide majority of people the far majority of people that i know anyway particularly would much rather be able to work a shitty job getting paid crappy amounts of money but actually be able to kind of earn the money through the sweat of their own brow as opposed to just sitting at home collecting dull money right and they don't have the possibility to do so because people in these kind of you know middle class type people for the most part are there telling you pointing fingers and telling you that you must wear a mask everywhere you go we can't go outdoors until everybody's been offered a vaccination it's just like most people don't have that luxury of waiting they just don't because they they don't even know how long they're going to be alive for like not to be macabre but most people for sure like i said with the festivals and parties i'd imagine we lost a greater number of people the first what that july 22nd when things are going to be reopened up on freedom day it wouldn't surprise me if people told me there's a few people that self-expired after that day because they didn't give themselves in life any purpose like i know in like what was it but just before christmas i remember it happening there was quite a few promoters around the country maybe about three or that was associated with like you know um club nights or associated with like local you know dance music scenes who unfortunately self-expired and you know no real reason was given but you can read between the lines that either this person already had mental health issues anyway to begin with and from some point you know and for to some extent the ability to go out and just communicate with random strangers outdoors every day it kind of just helped to somehow quell or somehow dampen whatever um that illness was and then without it it kind of didn't festered and grew over time or just some people just would just generally down the dumps were not able to able to do the thing that they know and love you know every other weekend so to have these people tell us that hey you shouldn't be doing this, should we be doing that it's just it's so detached from actual reality of most people and again forget the club just just in terms of moving around the city you want to be able to do that and you know um 
I can't think of anything worse than having more delays. I really can't think of anything worse. Like even the deaths and the cases doesn't weigh up to the inability to be able to kind of move around and do the things that you want. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But again, maybe I'm in the wrong area in the minority. Again, like I said, this video was the one that got me blocked from Secret DJ, which again, I think is quite pathetic considering that I'm a fan of the stuff he does. I like his books and stuff and fairly like, you know, I'm fairly a fan of his content, but you know, I think COVID and stuff has really brought out the worst in people. I think some people just been incapable of understanding or accepting other people have different points of view when it comes to how we reopen the world. It's not right. It's not wrong it just is what it is you're able to you know articulate if you're able to articulate yourself explain yourself any way you want then it is what it is or you know i just don't know i don't know people have their way of doing things and i guess and if he's pissed off he's pissed off it is what it is but what can you do we move on we move on what else we have to talk about here let's screws over that bit let's give it that bit oh yeah this is interesting so this is courtesy of the verge right and this is something that makes a lot of sense if i be completely honest considering if i kind of way up the way that i interact with this app itself this is closer to the verge it says the following the verge says this oh why is it not loading oh why does it do this for god almighty okay let's go back here so this is closer to the verge it's got this or this so the verge is the following head of instagram says instagram is no longer a photo sharing app right it's a really bizarre headline to read but it does make a lot of sense if you kind of read into it a little bit especially if i kind of like i said compare how i use the app itself it says instagram is no longer a photo showing up according to adam mosiri the head of instagram in a video post on his instagram and twitter accounts mosiri said that the company is looking to lean into entertainment and video after seeing the success of competitors like tiktok and youtube he described some up-and-coming changes in experiments that instagram will be doing including showing user recommendation to the topics um, they're not following and making video more immersive by offering full screen experience we heard recently about instagram's experiments with algorithmic additions inside the main feed but the idea basing them off of topics that users can select appears to be a new one for their platform the app has also uh, had a full screen video experience um the, the, sorry the app has also had full screen video experiences for a while for posted content on igtv and rules and stories but i says the company wants to embrace video more broadly the message that instagram is sending is clear it's no longer wants to be thought of as a square photo sharing app as Siri puts it but instead as a general entertainment app driven by algorithms and videos at the moment though it's vague as to how instagram plans are doing that and whether it'll be improving and innovating on features popularized by apps like tiktok and just making something a new with a few facebooky tweets so when you hear that it's pretty you know shocking to hear because you what the one thing you do associate instagram with is the feed and the kind of square image but if i compare how i use the app and you know i'm not really the best case scenario for it because i'm not that attached to social media platforms in general i can go weeks and maybe months without posting or engaging with them for the most part but i know some people live on these things every single day every minute of the day but for me personally i don't necessarily post a lot of stuff on my feed if i do post stuff on my feed it's usually centers around maybe the books that i'm like mostly self improvement improvement stuff um stuff that i've work that i've done myself whether it's kind of graphic design or whether it's djing stuff or where working out and that's mostly it and then um or some photography bits and bobs but the types the kind of like shit posting feedy sort of stuff i mostly leave that to my instagram stories which i then don't use that often but then when i do jump on the app because i tried my best to kind of like the content that i'm into so my and my algorithm or my feed kind of caters more to stuff that i like and i get less dancing tiktoky videos and more working out skateboarding um dj stuff and all that stuff that i like and trainers and fashion and all that sort of stuff um i found myself when i remember on my feed i found myself spending more time checking out clips of stuff like people lacing shoes up people talking about a drop people talking about a workout or whatnot like or even watching a workout and saving them to my bookmarks then i do spend time going on my main feed and checking what people have loaded on their square bit of the instagram because i think because for the most part if you're on your main feed on instagram what you're seeing is mostly for the most part is what people are loaded on their feed but i don't necessarily post on my feed and i don't necessarily check what other people post on their feed i'm always in the discovery bit of the app so i'd imagine a lot of other people are the same as i am where they kind of spend most of their time in their little discovery bit maybe sometimes checking instagram stories so because of that instagram have kind of decided or recognized that for the most part most of the content that does well on their stories bit is stuff that moves video clips on people's feed video clips on their story video clips on their reels so it does make a lot more sense that they're pivoting away from the photo sharing thing but it is disappointing in one sense because part of the a lot part of what made instagram amazing was the photo sharing idea of it the fact that you can you know put these features these filters on your pictures 
you can make them look a certain way, different gradients, all that effects and all that stuff. And that really kind of helped to bolster its kind of reputation. A lot of photographers jumped on there. A lot of kind of amateur photographers, a lot of people that kind of probably got their start in photography, on photography in general, mostly based on the platform itself. So to see it pivot away from that is disappointing. But again, considering how much of a force YouTube and TikTok is at the moment, and also considering that Instagram has been bought by Facebook, they couldn't ignore it, right? They just couldn't ignore what the competition is saying out there. They had to kind of devise a way to make that work and again with you think of stuff like verses and how popular that's been you think of the the countless amounts of um sort of instagram live kind of q a back and forth beefs that have happened all this sort of stuff that have gone on people are going on live in general is added to it like the you know the prevalence of video in general is definitely something that can't go unnoticed on instagram um for sure and like I said, my own habits on the app have completely changed. I don't check it at all. I hardly check my feed. Sometimes I'll be on the app and I might randomly accidentally see something on the feed. I'll be like, oh, wow, surprise. I didn't even know. For instance, like I saw one person who I've known for many years. And I didn't even know this person had a baby. And the kid is like, you know, it looks like it's a year old or something. I didn't know she was pregnant. I didn't know she had the kid. And now the kid's a year old. So I've missed legitimately like two and a half years so much of her life that she's uploaded on Instagram stories. And when I watched, sorry, when she, in, she was uploaded on Instagram feed. And when I checked her feed itself, I actually saw, yeah, she did post every you know as any woman would do she posted the entire journey of her pregnancy and i'd completely missed all of it uh, so um i'm not exactly you know interacting with it the way that it kind of has been made uh, i'm actually interacting with it a different way instagram i recognize that and then now they're going to cater towards it so i can't really complain too tough again it would be nice to have it be chronological and not be kind of you know the they kind of purposely put the feed in a certain way to kind of push certain content in front of you so you can watch it different ways they sometimes obviously now implement or insert loads of sponsored bits sometimes bits in there that you don't even follow which they're going to be doing now with the topics and stuff so it's going to be a little bit of a shitty experience and the major thing that i'm still annoyed with that they haven't reintroduced or brought back on the app is the ability ability to kind of search instagram stories via location there was this ability before which is how i was able to kind of globe trot around the world and see what different scenes are saying and check out different clubs and what the vibe is you could basically like select Berghain and click instagram stories you can see loads of these green kind of screened uh, uh videos of people uploading video clips of themselves dancing in you know Berghain, obviously because you can't see because they cover it with a sticker but you'd see these green screens all over the place where people are uploading clips of themselves outside or inside Da, 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 da. and for some reason just before the election the states it felt like i don't know when it happened or why it happened they, they took that that feature off and they disabled it so that's really been one of the reasons again why my usage or overall of the app has kind of dwindled over time because you know part of it was to kind of see what everyone was getting up to outside of the scene but interesting pivot interesting to see what that does for creators does that make people want to do more instagram content because it feels like a lot more people a lot less people are on there making stuff it feels like i don't know why um it just feels like people are mostly putting their energies into other platforms and then using instagram as like another sort of distribution platform as opposed to making stuff specifically for that platform itself you know what i mean like um it feels like people are just using it as another like share to option so maybe it's going to drive people back to making specific uh bespoke con piece of content that only exists on instagram who knows who decides all those kind of things maybe it will change going forward but i'm interested to see how that develops but yeah instagram is no longer a photo sharing app courtesy of the verge we move we move we move what else we have here uh, what else we have here what else we have here let's move on from that one. Oh, we've got this is pretty cool we've got this courtesy of hype beast it says here Pata and Vault Vans update the Mean Eyed Cats collaboration. Pata's the, one of those brands that I think doesn't get enough credit when it comes to their collabs, especially sneaker stuff. Like they do really, really good bits of footwear, footwear collabs, let's say in general. Um, really underrated. Always kind of, they either go, they, they can even do two things. They either do them really well in terms of like subtle collaborations where only a couple of key details are changed, kind of a nod to the sneakerheads, or they can do some really bombastic sort of like branded stuff like this that again would still appeal to someone like myself who maybe would want their stuff to be a little bit more plainer. But this looks flipping brilliant. This is the collaboration via Pattern and Van Vault. You've got here a skate high and an old school, it looks like by the looks of it. Uh, Mr. Curtis of Hypebeat said, I'm sorry, I'm based. Pattern is reunited with Van Vault, returning with a mean eyed cat 
Cats theme that has ran throughout the previous collaboration in 2015 and 2017. The latest capsule sees a classic Van Vogt silhouette redesigned in a diverse range of colorways and creating sneaker subtle, suitable sorry, for anyone, anywhere. Featuring a silhouette such as the old school and a skate high, the pack sees Pat's signature script logo appearing across uppers in black and white, forest grey, high risk red, silver pink, salute and almond buff. The midsole of each colorway is adorned with a mean eyed cat's text. Each design comes with a custom Pat's branded laces while the footwear releases alongside these graphic tees and a collaborative pair of socks you really can't go wrong with them and it's socks tees and laces so um the shoes themselves i've mentioned i think previously it would be nice to see more brands you know um return or reintroduce the vans chucker but it looks like chuckers are done it looks like unless you specifically call for a chucker yourself in your collaborations it looks like most people decide to either go for skate highs skate mids um maybe half cabs and for sure old schools and new schools um but when it when it comes to like oh no sorry new schools when it, old schools and um eras or authentics when it comes to doing half cabs or chucker sorry no one really gives a shit about them unfortunately but you know old schools and skate highs are definitely up there with my favorite models i'll definitely stay overall in terms of shape that suits me i'd go for chuckers old school and then skate highs and then the rest of them can just kind of do a little dance on the edge of a pier somewhere but the shoes themselves look brilliant the obviously the all black pair you already know that i'm on those ones hard the all black pair with the pattern on the laces it kind of reminds me of the oh the sorry with the with the text on the laces kind of reminds me of like a neighborhood kind of collab that they would do stuff like that with obviously the solid block on the oh, on the midsole and the fox in no stripe anywhere on the midsole looks really good um they look really 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 nice the black probably if i had to go if i had to pick a colorway that i would probably wear you know daily basis obviously would be these the sort of like is it like a brown khaki-ish slaty sort of colorway on the uh, on the old schools and then maybe in the skate highs definitely this sort of like s sky blue whatever colorway that is there and of course the blacks and that white is really nice too to be honest all of them are nice all of them in the uk 10 would definitely be much much appreciated <laughs> but yeah i think they all look really really great um again patter are really underrated or under um they don't get the love and appreciation that they probably should do when it comes to collabs maybe because they're not the most flashiest of brands they don't sh shove into people's faces but considering their long storied history in this kind of sneaker space and the fact that they've kind of collabed with just about every single brand under the sun and they still come out with fresh ideas still come out with fresh takes still come out of a way to somehow be able to take to kind of appeal to the younger kids and to the kind of older heads like myself is definitely something to be respected and these are going to be coming out when july the 15th at all their stores they've got a store in london milad and amsterdam july 9th they're going to be coming out and then other retailers july 15th so definitely keep an eye out for them if if you're a fan of vans and if not what are you doing what are you doing next on the list here what do we have we have uh, we have this interesting one in it yeah this is courtesy of hypers again supposedly martin rose has done a collaboration with nike um for an england supporters jersey which is um interesting more so because if I remember, well, I don't know who that guy was. I forgot his name. The guy did like a collaboration with like Stone Island and CP Company. He's like an Argentinian dude. He does like industrial design or pro design something. And then he started designing jackets. I forgot his name. Anyway, so they've done a lot of these sort of like branded fashion brand collaboration jerseys in England before. Um, usually they don't necessarily, you know, look that great. I think there's a lot of money put into the marketing of them and, you know, uh, activations and launches and stuff but in terms of it connecting with the average consumer it never really goes over for some reason i don't know why it is but it just doesn't happen but mostly I mean, let's uh, let's see i don't know why it is maybe it has to do with the fact that inga don't play well anyway in general so then when you're doing collaborations it just doesn't necessarily resonate as well as it probably should do because people just definitely don't give a shit because they're gonna shit now that england obviously are doing well and people generally like the players that play for england there seems to be a lot more affinity to it um with the fans and the players of course and the, you know and it seems like even though we're in a you know somewhat of a precarious position in the, in the country overall um it seems like overall relations wise everyone seems to be okay with supporting england calling themselves english calling themselves british all this stuff. i don't know there seems to be less confusion as it was maybe in prior years maybe this is the perfect time for a martin rose england collaboration jersey and that people would legitimately want to wear it as well because i think just from a purely aesthetic point of view it looks 
brilliant it looks really really good i love the little bits of detail that she's kind of um implemented on it, the little twist that she's made and it just generally looks like a vibe i'm not gonna lie um you got the all white top here kind of a retro sort of feel again taking inspiration from some of the older england kits from before you've got a little bit of a bigger badge it feels like england crest on the chest here with the three lions you've got i think all all the best um martin rose written there on the shirt a little autograph signature you've got this sort of like inside out you seam it feels like on the out on the yeah reverse seam it feels like on the outside you've got this great old school nike athletic or sports team sports kind of logo on the outside there with martin rose engineered receptions which looks really great there's some just great little details that just make it look really really cool something that i think oh, let me get us off the screen something that maybe most people i think probably would be up for wearing if it was obviously you know again You'd want these things to be the one thing that you don't want this thing to happen is for it to end up being one of those things where it's only available in certain locations, um, you know, only available all the tier one or the flipping limited edition shops and regular fans can't get a hold of them. But in terms of as far as um, hipster football jerseys go, this is definitely up there with one of the best, better ones and one that I would generally would wear. And again, maybe it has to do with the fact that the England England team are playing far better. And again, we have a far more likable group of players and everyone seems to kind of get along for the most part. Um, I don't know. I quite like it. Um, it looks like it's reversible as well. It looks like if you reverse it, you've got this other logo here underneath the Free Lions logo. I think that might be a, a kind of nod to an old logo. I don't too sure, but that looks really, really great um yeah and there's a hat as well that goes with it a company hat that i'm sure you can kind of flip inside out i like it man it looks flipping banging i'm not going to lie i really really like it um what a great little jersey you got here the lost lionesses got here martin rose emblem on the cap um i like it how they put all the models on these little like kind of top sort of like platforms you remember those things that you people collected back in the day with the football players right i forgot what it was called was it called tops i forgot what it was called it was before my time but i remember it being a thing people used to always love uh, collecting those sort of things so that looks pretty pretty decent man i like it with the labels on the back you can't be mad at this man this looks really good what does it say underneath the crest it says uh the lost lions the lost lionesses 1971 to 2021 to 2021 sorry 2021 um well it's 2021 but yeah because it's here read the text it says after teasing the collaboration recently nike and martin rose have now come together to launch a special edition england supports jersey the item is inspired by the story of the lost lionesses the unofficial england women's team who played in 1971 world cup and were treated like heroes at the tournament in mexico the genderless jersey is reversible with one side celebrating the lost lionesses through a special edition badge and a number 71 featuring the prominently in the center the reversible construction is a nod to the fact choosing the crest they were um and choosing how they want to express their support the other side of the jersey is more similar to the england official kit although it features a subtle tribute to the lost nines and an all the best message from uh, martin rose alongside the jersey which comes um in an intentionally oversized fit nike and martin rose have also prepared a special edition cap featuring all white construction the nike and martin rose jerseys available for pre-order now until july 10th via martin rose web store as well as partnering with nike martin rose okay so it's amazing isn't it I'm, I'm a big fan of it man. i think it looks fucking brilliant i definitely wear this oversized england top with all these little subtle details on it and now with the story you know the giving the background of why they chose this it's just it kind of brings more life to it i'm assuming some, maybe some of the models were part of the lost line this is the 971 team that'd be pretty great to have them on there but yeah i like it man i like it this is this is really more representative of what england's about nowadays especially with um the amount of representation that gives on the england team and the people on the multicultural side of things i definitely think this kind of fits a lot more and again it's less it's kind of just done right in it there's no amount of nonsense no amount of hiring of you know ridiculous youtubers and getting them to pose in these tops like this is just kind of it feels real do you know what i mean it doesn't take much i mean just some person just going into the archives looking to history books and pulling out these really cool references and then putting this together in this great shirt and all of a sudden it kind of looks way more better than what it probably should have done yeah this i like this man it looks really really good so big up martin rose um a great little kit there definitely something that i'll keep my eye on definitely something i keep my eye on what else we got here let's move on ba, 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 ba. oh what's happening here why does it keep freezing on me 
Okay, we got that. How much watch time we got? Did we waste a lot of time already or not? We've got about an hour already, innit? We've got about an hour, so maybe let's just chuck on maybe a couple bit, a couple other bits and bobs before we leave you here. I don't want to hold you on for too long. What else have we talk about here? Um, oh yeah, we got this. This is courtesy of Hypebeast. This is celebrating. Oh, why is it doing this for? Why is it not letting me? Yeah, come on, just work for a little bit. Work for me for just two seconds if you don't mind. It's courtesy of Hypebeast. Says Nigo looks at the past for Levi's five one and trucker um, capsule. I think I was talking to someone about this recently about the need to have like really cool key staples in your wardrobe. And I think one of the key staples in any man's wardrobe is to maybe have yeah two things in a jeans department. Maybe a really good suit, like a good double denim suit like a good jean jacket and jeans that obviously go together you preferably want to buy them at the same time so they wear in at the same time or in addition to that you also should add a really good like denim jacket that you can just wear with anything like with chinos with shorts that's just kind of a universe kind of a versatile uh piece a top that you can kind of um, implement in most of your outfits and maybe like a raw denim pair but essentially just those two is probably enough right a, a full suit and maybe a, another separate denim jacket that you can wear with other outfits and i think one of the major inspirations for me personally when it comes to that sort of stuff is definitely um mostly the stuff that nigo was wearing in the past he's definitely somebody that people credited with having a really crazy collection of levi's if i'm not mistaken he might have sold a lot of them but i remember him having like a really insane collection of vintage levi's that he purchased you know from back in the day when he used to travel from japan over to the states going to swap meets and car boot sales and whatever it may be called to buy all these crazy pairs of jeans and now years later you know orange tab levi's and all this sort of crazy shit goes for real real crazy money and of course in parts of tokyo you know they have a real crazy fascination with just buying everything archive everything legit everything old school from when it was actually made so you can just imagine what that reception must have been like when he came back to tokyo with these hordes of kind of you know mint condition or, or vintage jeans that were worn in you know the 30s and shit that he's able to kind of bring back in pristine condition so he's been able to put together a collaboration with levi's um so far from what i read on the on the article it's only limited to like a hundred pieces so for sure this is going to go for a crazy amount um it's probably not something that a lot of people are going to be able to buy but i love everything about the photo shoot somehow they managed to get him to be they managed to kind of superimpose this younger version of nigo on the left hand side with his kind of signature beatles liam gallagher-esque kind of bowl haircut and then of course nigo in the current era and there's just nothing quite like having the perfect color wash denim suit um with obviously the sand color boots um it just it's just quintessential you know reminds of the old school um really heritage or the old the, the part of baby nate that i always fell in love with the thing that kind of made me a babe fanboy when i was first getting into streetwear that sort of classic um twist on modern americana staples um giving it a sort of you know urahara twist as if, if you might call it that and obviously now seeing nigo in his current age but yeah i love the whole shoe itself it looks fucking incredible you've got here a great denim jacket um with some great jeans and shoes maybe just put him in a wig that might have helped and cleaned him up a little bit some filters made him look a bit younger but it looks fucking brilliant the wash on the jeans is perfect this fit looks really great uh you've got a great denim jacket here with i'm sure some key crazy details maybe some hidden gussets hidden pockets uh good snap buttons you know already the details are going to be insane in it um again limited 100 pieces only so it's probably not even worth even talking about unfortunately um but look look where the pockets are slightly down the back the darts here on the back as well um you've got this wicked button fly here on the belt loop on the waistband which is interesting i wonder how you meant to put your belts on there then that's interesting isn't it there's buttons that go all the way around on the outside but no belt loops maybe that's how it's designed it's designed just to sit on your hips and not to actually use a belt for it but that looks fucking cool in it i love it man not excessively ripped or distressed like i like i prefer and then the denim jacket is perfect for the most part and how it looks you got here the nice label with the tour in sort of like detailed on the collar as well nice chest pockets 
it just looks perfect personally it just looks really 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 good um and then again if you read the article itself uh human made nico is a dead end fanatic and now one of the culture's favorite collaborations is teamless with levi's for limited edition capsule captured outside the curry up restaurant chain we see nico and past meets present future representation of who nico was back in the day when he first got his hands on vintage levi's goods modeled by the latter we see the two-piece collaboration in illest glory which comprises of a pair of levi's 501s and a 1950 style two levi's trucker jacket both pieces are distressed and worn out looking like a denim that nico holds close to his heart for the 501s you'll find su suspender buttons rather than belt loops as well as adjustable patch about the okay that's what they are the suspender belt buttons okay um alongside um lightweight and repair all over what? alongside light wear and repair all over notably showing fire repair and deep creases and some bleached areas the trucker is much the same appearing in classic light blue um that makes the piece more special as it's modeled after nico bought uh, back in 1986 with his pocket money he said i bought it for 330 jesus christ that's a lot of money even back then 380,000 yen at the time because it was too much money i lied to my mother saying it was 3,800 yen um, nico then explained that both price pieces reproduce both aging and actual repair hence the final aesthetic in order to get your hands on a nico levi's capsule head over to levi's japan website from july 9th to 11th to sign up this will put you in a running together jacket and a jeans which are both limited to just 100 units each so these are going to go for crazy amounts on resale i'm not even sure what the retail is going to be like but you know if you don't have your money up don't even bother these are this is like fuck you pay me sort of stuff so but yeah it looks great looks amazing i'd wear the fuck out of both pieces easily um i love the look of it what, what are people saying in the hypebeast comments because they always love to hate everything what they're saying here i don't know it doesn't matter but yeah definitely check those out if you're a fan of them i am love nigga love everything does like i said one of my faves in general so i will try my best to get a pair but nothing's gonna happen but yeah nigo and levi's nigo and levi's anyway that might be where i leave you for now the next episode number 472 thanks for tuning in for the pleasure of your company if it's your first time check out the show via youtube make sure you smash that like button here subscribe leave me a comment down below if you listen via the podcast please give the app a, please give the show a share sorry and obviously leave me a five star review if you can that'd be greatly appreciated but until next time my friends be safe take care Peace.